What I have now done is found two equations in two unknowns, t and u. And if you remember your high school algebra, you can solve two equations in two unknowns. And that's what I'm going to have to do. Suppose I could do that. Suppose I could figure out what t is and what u is. Then up above, I said x is t minus u. I can subtract those, and I would have figured out what x is. So that's the strategy. That's where we're headed. I now have those two equations, 3tu is 24, and t cubed minus u cubed is 56, and I've got to solve these simultaneously. Now the way you do that is you find you solve one equation for one letter and substitute that back into the other. So let's look at that top equation. 3tu is 24. That tells me that u, let's solve that for u, is 24 over 3t. Just bring the 3t underneath on the right. But 24 over 3 is 8, so this is just 8 over t. So that's what u is. u is 8 over t. Go back to the second equation, t cubed minus u cubed is 56. u is 8 over t. Stick it in there. And so you'll get t cubed minus 8 over t, the quantity cubed, is 56. And if you cube that 8 over t, you'll end up with t cubed minus 512 over t cubed is 56. Now this is a landmark on the road to the solution. We're not quite there yet, but notice what I've got now. One equation, one unknown, t. If I can figure out what t is, I can go back and figure out what u is, I can go back up the line and figure out what x is, which is what the object is here. So now we just have to solve that equation. Well, that's still not quite there yet. You know, one of the troubles is it's got a t cube in the bottom. You don't want a variable in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by t cubed. And then when I distribute across, I can cancel out that t cubed in the bottom. So when I do that, I get t cubed times t cubed is t to the sixth. I get t cubed times minus 512 over t cubed is just minus 512. And on the right side, I get 56 t cubed. And one more thing. Let me move everything over to the left. And so here's the equation I got to do. This is what it's all going to come down to. Can I solve t to the sixth? That's what t cubed times t cubed will be. t to the sixth there will be six t's. Minus 56 t cubed minus 512 is zero. That's the ball game. Can we solve this? Well, gee, my first thought is this is worse. If you think about it, we started trying to solve a cubic, a third degree equation. That's a sixth degree equation. It seems like I made life worse. It's a sixth degree equation in t. But, and here's the real thing, here's the key to unlocking the whole problem. Yes, it's sixth degree in t, but it's second degree in t cubed. It's quadratic in t cubed, by which I mean, I could write that as the quantity t cubed squared. That's t to the sixth minus 56 times the quantity t cubed minus 512 equals zero. And you know what that looks like? That looks like a quadratic equation. In fact, it looks just like y squared minus 56y minus 512 is zero if you let y play the role of t cubed. So I've reduced the problem to solving that second degree equation but that's the exact second degree equation I solved at the beginning of this lecture. I had an x in instead of a y, but it was the same one. And if you look back, you see that we used the quadratic formula to figure out what y is. Now y is t cubed, but numerically y came out to be 64 or negative 8. And so using the quadratic formula in the course of solving the third degree equation, I decided that t cubed is 64 or negative 8. Now you only need one of these two solutions, so how about we'll use the t cubed is 64. Now all we got to do is back up the chain and we can do it. We're done. If t cubed is 64, then t is the cube root of 64, which is 4. So we, now we've nailed that down. I know what t is. u, I better figure out what u is. Well, remember we saw somewhere up the line that u was 24 over 3t, which we reduced to 8 over t. But I now know that t is 4, so u is 8 over 4. u is 2. And now the dramatic conclusion, x is what we wanted, the solution of our cubic. x is t minus u. 
I've just said that t is 4, u is 2, so x, the solution of the cubic that we started with, x cubed plus 24x is 56, would be x equals t minus u equals 4 minus 2 equals 2. That is how you do it. That's the solution of the depressed cubic. It's quite a journey, quite a workout, but it's kind of neat. First thing I better do here before we proceed is check it. You know, is this right? I better, better be sure. So you always want to check your answer. X is 2 is my candidate for the solution. So if X is 2, I'll stick it into X cubed plus 24X. That'll be 2 cubed plus 24 times 2, 8 plus 48, uh, 56, yes. So that's encouraging. It checks. Now, what you want to do in general is look at the depressed cubic x cubed plus mx equals n. This is the generic cubic. It doesn't have the 24 and the 56 in it. This is any cubic, any depressed cubic. And you do the same thing. You take the cube, t by t by t. You break it up into the little pieces. You get those equations spinning out. You let x be t minus u. You solve for t. You solve for u. And eventually, you get a general formula. The cubic equation, and I will show it to you, this is what comes out when you do it with the m's and n's. x turns out to be this giant formula. The cube root of n over 2 plus the square root of n squared over 4 plus m cubed over 27 minus the cube root of negative n over 2 plus the square root of n squared over 4 plus m cubed over 27. 